Hey everyone, welcome to Sonic Academy. My name is Catfire and you're watching Studio One 6.5 Beginner Level 1. In the next 15 videos, we're going to be making a track from scratch and getting acquainted with Studio One's interface and many of its awesome features along the way. Whether you're new to music production or just came from another dog, hopefully this course will give you all the tools that you need to get up and running with Studio One. So with that, let's get started. Now that we've started a new song and have our audio and MIDI devices all set up, Let's explore Studio One's interface starting with the toolbar. We'll leave the top left area for later as it's focused on automation, a topic we'll cover in an upcoming video. As we look to the right, let's examine the toolbar. We can select the tools in this area by clicking or using the keys one through eight on our keyboard. First, we'll explore the arrow tool, which is likely to be the tool we'll use most often in Studio One. With the arrow tool, we can select clips, create wider selections, move items, and adjust clip lengths. A handy feature here is that if we hold the Option or Alt key while resizing, we can stretch or compress clips, and this works on both audio and MIDI clips. It's a really useful feature. If we double-click a clip using the arrow tool, it opens the piano roll for MIDI clips and the audio editor for audio clips. An important interaction in Studio One is right-clicking clips in the sequencer. Whether they're MIDI or audio, this opens a context window providing all the possible interactions within Studio One for that specific clip. There are a lot of options in this menu, and I'll be covering some of them in the Level 2 course, but just keep in mind that it's a really fundamental part of Studio One's workflow. Before moving on, let's click on the arrow tool again, which reveals the alternative tools. From here, we can select a frequently used tool, and by pressing the Command key, we can switch to the secondary tool more quickly than by clicking or using a number key. The alternative tool stays active as long as we keep the Command key pressed, and it switches back to the arrow tool once we release it. Now let's discuss the Range tool, which is extremely handy for making detailed selections. By dragging with the Range tool, we can fine-tune our selection and it only affects the part we choose, unlike the arrow tool which selects everything it touches. The next couple of tools are pretty straightforward. The slice tool cuts, and the eraser tool deletes. The paint tool, however, is a bit more complex, and it's not just one tool, it contains several useful tools, which I'll be demonstrating in an upcoming automation video. To the right, we have the mute tool, which mutes and immutes clips, and next we have the bend tool, this creates a pivot point on a clip, and if we drag forward, it compresses everything in front of the point and expands everything behind it, and vice versa. It's especially useful for editing vocals and drums. For example, if a drum hit or vocal part isn't exactly where we want it, we can use this tool to adjust its placement. And over here we have the Listen tool, which lets us quickly audition individual clips from whichever point we click on. Moving over to this section, we have the Audio Bend tool, which is like the Bend tool, but more sophisticated. It detects transients in our audio according to the parameters defined in this area, creating multiple points that we can adjust or quantize to ensure our recording aligns precisely on the grid. We also have the Silence tool, which allows us to remove quiet parts of our audio. We can set parameters like thresholds and fades to clean up our audio clips, essentially working like a gate. Next up are the Quantize options. There are a lot of options here, but the coolest thing is that quantization in Studio One works with both MIDI and audio clips. If we select an audio clip and hit Apply, you'll see that our audio has been quantized according to the options we set. Really cool. Then we have the Macros toolbar. Macros are scripts that combine several functions, allowing us to perform complex actions quickly, we won't go into detail here as it's quite advanced, but once you're more familiar with Studio One, I strongly recommend exploring this feature. Then there's Input Quantize, which, when enabled, automatically quantizes whatever we play on our MIDI keyboard as we record, aligning it with the grid. To the right, we have the Quantize settings for the actual sequencer window, and the Time Base option here determines the time format of our sequencer, like bars, seconds, samples, or frames. Now, let's look at the Snap button and its options. These apply to nearly everything in the sequencer, clips, 
MIDI nodes, automations, etc. When enabled, snapping ensures that whatever we manipulate in Studio One aligns precisely to the grid. The ripple edit button is also crucial, in particular for audio editing tasks, because if enabled, and if we delete a clip, everything in front of it shifts back by the length of the clip we just deleted. Then, the auto scroll button ensures that our sequencer window moves along with the playhead, so whatever section is being played is always visible, and the cursor follows edit position moves the playhead to the start of any clip or event we click on. Over to the right is a fairly new feature, the toggle auto zoom button, and it offers three options, auto zoom full, auto zoom horizontally, and auto zoom vertically. I personally love the auto zoom full option as it lets me quickly zoom out and see the whole session. Over here we have the info view button. When enabled, it shows common shortcuts for whatever we're hovering over, which is especially helpful for beginners, but also as a quick refresher on shortcuts you might have forgotten about. And then there's the video player window, which we'll cover in the level two course. Finally, we have the scratch pad button. Scratch pads are alternate sequencer windows that let us experiment with different arrangements and edits within the same song. It's a really powerful feature, but we'll be exploring that in the level two course as well. In the next video, we're going to check out the sequencer and edit windows.